What an absolute belter. belter. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground, there's a lot of treasures to be found. Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland. Hello and welcome to Dirty Secrets of Scotland. I've just driven quite away because I'm in the Highlands and I'm back at that bottle dump that I had all those bottles from. So I'm really excited about today. Let's see what we can find. This is where I dug the last time. So I'm planning to dig here now, right next to it. And eventually I'll probably work my way right along here. But for now, let's get digging there. You may have noticed that I didn't actually throw out any soil there and that's because I was just cutting the turf at the top so now I'll take all that away and that'll happen just like this just like that it's just as easy as that I'm not out of breath at all but one thing I have noticed is there's a few things I'm particularly interested in this that bolt I'm not sure if that was from the last time but one thing you will remember is this um, manor house it's a manor house tip that I'm at um, the people that owned it back in the Victorian and Edwardian period weren't shy of a party. If you remember how many bottles I found the last time, over 200 just in that hole there. So I've dug out a hole of about, I'd say half that size now, or I've taken all the top off. I found this and I've also found this and it's probably just the base of one, but it's a flat bottomed Hamilton. And no, it's whole. <laughs> and that's right off the top. That's superb. Is that a drippy lippy? I don't know if you can see the little flies buzzing around me right now, but these are called midges and they bite. So I'm currently wearing some headgear, which I'll show you in a second. But this is a Schweppes bottle. Just trying to work out which king it is or queen. Not Victorian, I don't think, because it's not the little crown. But that is an amazing first find. That's an absolute belter right off the bat. Before the belter dance commences, this is the headgear I'm on about. If I didn't have this, I probably couldn't dig here because it is crazy. There's thousands of them. When the wind drops, you're just surrounded by them and they bite. So yeah, it's not much fun unless you've got one of these on. But I'm very happy because I just found my first bottle just under dig down. Not even, just, just under the surface. So that is so encouraging. Let's get more digging done. But in the meantime, we have something to take care of. Yeah! <laughs> And I'm gonna take it easy on the belter dances today because we've just driven a very long way and I've got lots of digging to do in the sunshine surrounded by midges. Not that I'm complaining, this is great, but I've got a lot of work to do. Less dancing, more digging. Yep, once again, this is exactly what it was like the last time. All the way to the top, and I'll show you what I mean soon. They're that close to the top, it's crazy. There's so many bottles here, and you'll see that as the day goes on. Just watch this, folks, how many bottles come out. There you go folks, another one. I haven't even touched it. Looks to be complete and it's this lemon and company from the last time. Got one of these last time, did a feature on it. That's awesome. 
seems to be undamaged as well. Blob top early. 1904 that company shot in my research, so this predates 1904. How cool is that? It's uh it's not one of the internal screw ones, it's actually for a cork. So yeah, that's an old bottle and that's a belter right off the top. Really chuffed with that. But as I say, more digging, less spelter dances. There will be a few I'm sure, but I've got to keep going. So let's find some more of these and hopefully other things as well. So you can see there, like, just in a few minutes of digging on camera and the bits that I've thrown away as well, the broken bits, a couple of rusty horseshoes, um, a jar which is unfortunately cracked, one of these toothpaste thingamajigs, I think, what was it, Odol or something like that, I said I did a feature on one of the, on these, and then these two beautiful, lovely skittle bottles, or flat-bottomed Hamiltons, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, that's a good start. And I've only just broken the surface. There's a lot of rock here. You probably saw me throwing rocks up there. So yeah, you're, you're sort of getting through the capping, which is not very, not very deep at all. It's right on the top and there's bottles between it. So you're kind of having to be careful, negotiate your way through the rocks into the bottles, but not so much that you break them. Um, I might actually swap and start using a, a fork instead now. It's that packed. There we go, I've only dug down about, I don't know, a foot tops, just at that bit, the rest about half a foot, and got this already. So you see what I mean? They've all got good age as well, they're all drippy lippy. There's the odd machine made one, but it's right at the top because they used it for a while. But yeah, soon I'll have a huge big pile here, so I'm going to have to already start moving them up the hill just to get them out of the way. And that's exactly what it was like last time, so hopefully this should be a good one. It's the closest I've come to a, a ginger, ginger beer. That's a real heartbreaker. Blob top. I think it's a cork one as well, so it's quite an old one. Or is it a screw one? No, no, it's a cork one. So that's an old ginger. I don't know what the company was. I've never seen one like that. So until I find a whole one, I won't know. But yeah, that's really, really encouraging. So hopefully find some gingers this time. Let's see. Excellent. Look what I just found. Printed stoneware. Ah, it's cracked, unfortunately. That's the problem with all these uh, boulders. A lot of the stuff is broken, but a lot of the stuff isn't. But still, I will be able to repair that, of course. That's a sepia print, Stranra, um, Wigtownshire, cream pot. They're uh, the rarest ones, I think, the sepia ones. So I'm really chuffed with that. That's a lovely pot. I'll just give that a quick repair when I get home and get it looking good as new. Hey. <laughs> Got this here folks, a lovely ball, cylinder tight. I think I found one of these the last time but it was broken. And this one's full so that's cool. I think it's got quite a lot of age to it. I don't think it's one of those internal threads. I think it's another cork job. And look at the base as well, it's got writing around the base. Let's see. I don't know, I've, I've not seen one like this before. This is cool, I really like this. I really like that, that's a belter. That's an absolute belter. The midget net is cool, right? It just, you know, just sets off the whole image. <laughs> you see them? You see the midges? I could see them constantly. Anyway, absolute belter. Underneath the soil are buried in the ground. There's a lot of treasure to be found. Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland. and woodland with trusted spade and hand This thing just came flying into my midgy net It would have hit me in the face otherwise I'm gonna have to remove you pal because otherwise you're gonna get killed in the dig I'll put you up here with the balls Off you go It's hiding, don't blame it I do look a little bit crazy in this entire ensemble Come here wee beastie I'm gonna pick you up and put you beside this ball. Must be terrifying. Just had this heartbreaker. I don't know what it says yet. 
the Kroonstad Breweries Limited. Kroonstad? That's definitely not near Inverness. I'm pretty sure of that. I would have heard of it. Uh, also, there's this as well, which is a heartbreaker. I think it says, by appointment to the King and Prince of Wales. That's such a shame. I don't even know if I broke this one, to be honest, but I haven't found the other half, so probably not. So I can't do anything with that, but I will probably cut that down and stick it on the Etsy store if you look out for it. Just add this. If it looks quite green under here, it's because we're under the umbrella, because it was in full sun. Very hot. I think this is plain. I think it's just some sort of ink. Oh, look, it's got a, some sort of stamp. What does that say? Price. It's hard to see through the net. Price something or other. It's a very interesting shape. I've never seen an ink like that before. It's got a wee ding out of it. Actually, I might have done that. Has it? Oh, no, I don't think it does. I think it's just something on there. But yeah, that's cool. I like that. It's a nice wee find. All right, a bit different. Another heartbreaker, folks, I'm afraid. This is the one that I found the last time that was broken as well. So the case gins are here as well. I had the top of another one as well. I don't think that's a fresh break. Well, I doubt it as well. No, that's, uh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. But if there's that kind as well, then hopefully I'll find another whole one. It'd be amazing if I did. It's a really good dig so far. Fingers crossed for some more excellent finds coming out. I've got what looks like another case gin. I hope it's the same kind as the one that I just found. And I hope it's whole, more importantly. Um, you see how hard this is to dig? It's all just rocks, which I think they threw in on purpose. Oh, there's a bottle underneath it as well. <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. Uh, okay, which do we go for first then? That one's under a root. So that doesn't make it very easy. Still under the root. I think that's just one of the standard drippy lippy plain bottles that I find constantly here. Well, let's go back to the case gin. Oh, there's, there's a bottle behind it as well. I don't know if I've done enough to get that out now. Yep. And it looks like it's whole. And it looks like it's plain. A plain one. I've not seen any plain ones here yet. I'm not sure if that's a crack or not. I don't think it is actually, I think it's just a formation line. It looks like it may be slightly older than the other ones. I'm not very sure. But yeah, that's cool. It would have been nicer if it had um, embossing on it, but it's still cool. My apologies, folks. It's not plain at all. This is actually a seal bottle. This is a case gen seal bottle. I haven't even looked at the seal yet, but it seems to be intact. Yep, it is. I can't even read that because I've got this on, but it says Amsterdam at the bottom. And it probably is a little bit older than other ones that I've found so far. That is an absolute belter. Look how gorgeous this is. A seal bottle, folks. Not just, a, not just an embossed one, an actual seal one. That is an absolute belter. Case gin seal bottle, I hear you say. I believe this. Another one. It's not a seal one though. It's one of these ones from the last time. Blank and Haim and Nolet. Sorry, I'm out of breath. It's just unbelievably hard to dig this. It's all rock and uh, that's rust. I'll leave that to dry out. It's just all rock and glass, and you're trying to be really careful, but also at the same time forceful enough to move stuff out of the way. It's a tricky dig. I'm using the fork to get down into the ground, sort of in between the stones, shovel out, and it's like a couple of forks, then a spadeful. Hard going. 
but it's absolutely amazing. The finds that are coming out are probably the best finds so far in a dig in Dirty Secrets of Scotland. Buzzing. Lunchtime roundup. Amazing lunchtime. <laughs> We've got this beautiful, I think it's an ink. Um, it's got a stamp on it, but I still can't read it because I've got the midge net on. This beautiful um, cylinder type ball with writing right around the bottom, which is quite unusual. Very small base. Um, the Schweppes bottle. The lemon bottle. Sepia printed cream pot. With damage, but I'll repair that. This thing, which is like a toothpaste, I think. This, which is, I think, a sort of Victorian iron for clothes. I'm not sure. It could be. Um, a big old marmalade that we get everywhere. Um, heartbreaker number one, the ginger beer lob top, which is sadly broken. This, which I may have broken myself, but I'm going to cut that down. This, which I think was broken already, but I'm going to cut that down. This, I'm not sure if I'll take that or not. I'll decide later, because uh, I don't know if it would work taking the top off this or if it would just break it. I'll have a think. And then the belters so far, I mean, there's, it's all belters. Um, but the blank in him and know it like the last time, which has got a bit of rust in it, which I'll need to get off. And this is gorgeous. This is probably number one belter so far. Absolute stunner. Look at it glistening in the sunlight. Absolutely amazing. I don't know how I'm going to eat my lunch now without taking the midget net off. I'm going to have to run about or something. This is going to be fun. A gentle breeze is coming this way. I've been able to take off the net. Yes. It feels so nice. Long may it continue. Midges can't land on you if there's any kind of wind, anything above seven miles an hour. So this must be above seven miles an hour. Please stay, because it's not nice having to wear that net in this heat. I have a heartbreaker here, folks. Another broken ginger. I'm not sure if it was printed though, but it looks very much like a ginger beer to me. Um, that's two brokens, so hopefully the next one, if I find one, will be whole. Fingers crossed. Just been digging for about two hours and finding just plain bottle after plain bottle after plain bottle, then boom. A wee mini Schweppes one. It's like a half size drippy lippy. Little skittle bottle, that's beautiful. And it's like the one I found before that was broken by appointment to King and Prince of Wales. The King and Prince of Wales. That's beautiful. That's an absolute belter. Lovely jubbly. Right, keep going. <laughs> Here's all the plain bottles from today. Look at all that. Not as many as the last time, gotta say. Still plenty though, for one day's dig. Not bad at all. And this is the rubble and the brokens. And then the pile of earth as well. It's mainly soil, I mean there's ash in it, but it's mainly just soil here. Which makes it harder to dig, as well as the rock, obviously. <laughs> Full time roundup with all the midges. So that's the first half, you've seen that already. So that's just a quick visual recap. Second half, very, very sparse and very quiet. Loads and loads of plain bottles came out, but that doesn't really help me at the moment. So this is interesting because it says the Queen. So that's Victorian for sure. Um, or I would have said the Queen when it was full. Um, potential there, a broken ginger. And I've since noticed that on the edge that it says Schweppes. It would have been a Schweppes ginger beer. That would have been lovely actually if that was whole. Um, and then I found a little key hole cover thing. Um, I don't know what this is. It's like some sort of strange cap. And then this, which was the belter for the afternoon. Lovely little flat bottomed Hamilton. Um, one of a few today, one of three flat bottomed Hamiltons. So overall it was a really good dig. It was just slow in the afternoon. And that's the full time roundup. Morning folks, you may notice I'm in a slightly different environment to the last time I stayed in the Highlands, as in I'm not in a tent. This is my wee bedroom for the next two nights. I'm in a bunkhouse that was paid for by our patrons, so thank you very much to our patrons for doing so. Now, today 
I've woken up and I've looked at the footage and I'm thinking, hmm, there's not going to be enough footage for two videos. So what I'm going to do is something slightly different. I'm going to make it one video and I've never done that before. There won't be any bit at the end about me making something or crafting or foraging or whatever. It'll just be two digs, maybe a history bit. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, as I said, this is day two and I've got some digging to do. So I better go with this bunkhouse, pick up a spade. And welcome back to part two of Dirty Secrets to Scotland, two dig special, back of the Highland Manor House tip. Now, I've got a long day ahead of me and a lot of midges to fight off. Again. <laughs> anyway, enough talking, let's get digging. I just realised that these plants here, the way I rhododendrons, well, they're dead, all of them. They just break out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of these bushes and that gives me more room to dig. <laughs> It took the midges about three seconds to figure out the breakfast was served. Breakfast being me. Excellent, so now I've cleared all of this virgin ground by getting rid of all of those rhododendrons. They're there now, and I actually know why they've been, why they've died. They've actually been killed because they're an invasive species. So on the bottoms of the stalks, oh yeah, there is one here. You can see there where it's been bored. The groundskeeper's probably done that to kill them back because there's just too many of them. That's what they look like, they're beautiful, beautiful plants, but they're not meant to be here. <laughs> they were introduced. So yeah, they keep an eye on them and knock them back. So that's what's happened. So this is just a fresh area to dig that I didn't realize because it was covered in, well, dead rhododendrons, I suppose. <laughs> probably see in that sped up video how much of a struggle it is it's all just rock is coming out sometimes big boulders as well and um, so it's really really hard just to get down so now I'm going to switch to a fork to get down a bit and then scoop out with the spade which is what I've been doing here I can see a skittle bottle nice I actually opened up another hole well it's the hole from last time because over there it's proven pretty tough, far too many stones, far too many roots. So I thought, you know what, I'll leave that and come here. And I've been digging for about 20 minutes. Let's get this out. Hey, it's whole. It's a Schweppes as well, another Schweppes. But it's a different one this time. Um, a blob top. I don't think it's got any anything apart from Schweppes on it. It's a nice old bottle though. Lovely. That was a good start. Took a bit to get going, but it's a good start. I think I just found the prongs for the fire. The old fire prongs. So now. <laughs> they're totally well. Yeah, they're definitely gone. They just fell apart. Cool. A bit of history though, even though it's wrecked completely. And a wee bottle here as well, but it's a screw top. Found that right on the top. It says Zoobs, Zoobs, Zoobs. Check this out. Shovel. Looks like someone beat me to it. Or maybe it was the person that put it all here in the first place. Also occurred to me. Also there's a bit like a shield. <laughs> It's a bit mangled. It was very early, start of June, but this is a charcoal burner mushroom, I believe. Got a ball here, panel ball, nothing on the front. W. Murphy Huddersfield. Tav. Tav J. Boot dressing. 
Tav J boot dressing. Oh, okay. Boot polish, cool. Let's get the top off Is that cork. Well, it was a cork, and I had one of those metal parts on the top, but that's completely corroded away. So I'll need to get that out later. That's cool. Phew. Tough going, and I've moved now three times. But I do believe I've just found another case gin. Is that a crack or is it a... I'm not sure if that's a crack or a formation line. But still, it's cool anyway. I think it might be a formation line actually. Oh, very warm today. No wind, so the midges are eating me. But finds are starting to come out, so I will persevere. Beautiful. Blank and him and know it. Okay, I've got balls coming out in numbers again, which is good news. Mostly broken, but there are some whole ones there as well. That's really good news, I've hit another sweet spot. Happy days! Just like this, another flat-bottomed Hamilton. Different one this time. Belfast. Rossi's, oh, I've heard of that company before. Okay, cool. So that's a couple of flat bottoms, a gin, panel ball. It's much harder today because I'm actually going from the bottom of the slope up and it's uh, harder to dig, but I'm still getting fine, so I'm going to keep going. Quite a few heartbreakers coming up now. I think that would have been a proper Hamilton rather than a flat bottomed one. Similar to the one that I saw yesterday with the Queen on it. And that, I don't know, some sort of pictorial. Beautiful. This is the problem, I'm on the slope now, so I will find broken stuff. This is interesting. It's from Rothsey. Rothsey? <laughs> wow, can't be too many of them around then. That's from Belfast, it's a pictorial, I think it's a... I think it's a griffin, not sure. Belfast, writing on both sides, a nice ball. And this, which is a British foreign something, water, Glasgow, B and F, acid etched. And then this, which is a Hamilton bottle. So I'm hoping that there's going to be at least one of these whole um, I'm just making my way up the hill now, next to where I dug the last time. Let's see what happens. Just had this. It's this Belfast company, but it's a full ball this time. I'm not sure if it's strippy lippy or not, but it's got that lovely griffin on there. You see that? It's an interesting bottle, I can't tell. It's got a number on the bottom. So maybe this one's machine made, I'm not sure. I'll need to have a look at that later. Another heartbreaker, folks. But it's always a bit of a mystery. What does this say? Registered Cantrell and would that have been Cochrane? Trademark, ginger beer. I think that's the same as the other one that I found. Cool. Keep looking for a whole one. You wouldn't believe that, it's the same bottle. Just walked up here to find the other bit. It's exactly the same bottle. Wonder if I could repair that. Take about a quart of a uh, millipart to do it, but yeah. Hmm, maybe. I'll think about it. Once time round up. Okay, so it's not loads and loads this lunchtime. That's because I've been moving around a lot. I finally settled on a spot. Anyway, you've got the blank in him and no case gin, which is great. It's absolutely roasting in the sunshine. Um, Schweppes bottle, flat bottomed Hamilton. This be Belfast flat bottomed Hamilton. Another Belfast bottle, which I've never had before, which is quite cool. I think it may be machine made though, with the griffin on there. And the boot polish from um, 
Huddersfield. And that's it for now, amongst millions of uh, plane bottles. Um, yeah, that's the lunch time roundup. I just filled in the hole from yesterday. It was massive and I didn't really want to do that at the end of the day. So that's done now, thankfully. Still got that to fill in though. And this. <laughs> but I'm not ready for packing up yet. That's just to save me time later. Um, I'm getting some good finds out of here, so let's keep going. First bottle in a while. In a big drought after lunchtime again today. The curse of lunchtimes. Oh yeah, it's nice. It's a Fortrose bottle. Fortrose. What's that? J. G. I don't know. J. Grant. <laughs> and cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nice. Just had another case, Jen. Whew. I am tired. This is hard going, seriously hard going. I am exhausted now, but I'm really glad that I stuck in. There was a banking of um, drowned that I wanted to go up, so I went to the bottom and worked all the way to the top. You know, I'm almost at the top and that is the result, so hopefully there'll be even one more. I don't know, but that's an absolute belter. The belter dance won't be much just now though. <laughs> I think due to the fact that I was very tired, hot and being consumed by about a million midges, I overlooked the usual full time roundup. Sorry about that folks. Anyway, here's a photo gallery of the best of the best finds from the two days that I took when I got home. Enjoy! That was a very tiring dig, very tiring. I've taken the hood off, which might be foolish because we're about to hit midgy time, which is about five o'clock in a minute. They just go crazy. Thanks for joining me and 800 million midges on Dirty Secrets of Scotland. <laughs> Had a really enjoyable dig. The second half was tough going. I think I need to go the other way next time. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me and the midges. Until next time. If you want to support Dirty Secrets of Scotland, you can do so in three ways. One, you can buy us a coffee over on Kofi. Two, you can buy things from our Etsy store. Things that we create and also things like that that I dig up. And three, you can become a patron of Dirty Secrets of Scotland. Thank you so much to all our patrons that have done that already. Actually, patrons, you financed this trip because you paid for my accommodation. Thank you so much and thank you to all for watching. Until next time. All filled in. As you can see, I've pretty much dug the whole hillside now and those dead rhododendrons came in very handy to cover up the ground until the grass comes back, which it will. A very fertile place for all the new seeds to come to. And in about a year, you won't even know that I've been here. It's the history bit. This beautiful square bottle is my first ever case gin which features a glass seal. The bottle was mould blown into a wooden mould which is why there are wood grain impressions on the surface of the glass. The lip was formed after the bottle was moulded, usually by the bottle maker's apprentice. The excess glass running down the neck resembles candle wax, hence drippy lippy. The seal would have been made by heating a glass blob and affixing it to the bottle's shoulder, then stamping the company's name into it, similar to how a wax seal is made to close a document, preventing it being seen by prying eyes. 
These bottles are known as case gins as they were designed to fit into square or rectangular wooden cases, hence making them square in section. This example was made to contain gin made by perfumed water manufacturer, merchant and distiller Salomon Abraham van Dijk of Amsterdam. His company did extremely well, albeit for a very short period, 1898 to 1903. Salomon enjoyed working relationships with merchants in Brussels, London, Liverpool and Glasgow in Scotland. Despite being a successful businessman, Salomon appears to be something of a controversial character at times too. In 1899, during the Second Boer War in South Africa, and after an offensive by the British Army went horribly wrong, the Brits fled and set up garrison in the town of Ladysmith, with the Boers quickly setting siege to the town. The majority of people in the Netherlands sympathised with the Boers over the British. Apparently Salomon did the exact opposite, sending 100 cases of gin to the besieged British Army in Ladysmith. This did not go down at all well with the Dutch press. In an attempt to backpedal his way out of a maelstrom of bad publicity, Salomon responded by sending a further hundred cases of gin, but this time to the Brits' opponents, the Boers, only to be met again by staunch criticism by the Dutch press. If you don't want to undermine the resistance of the Boers in these troubled days, don't give them gin. If you don't want to see their firing hand diminish, don't give them gin. Seems poor old Salomon couldn't win. He probably should have just kept 200 cases of gin, to be fair. Anyway, back in the UK, it seems Salomon's customer in Glasgow was the firm of Robert Crystal and Sons of Charing Cross. This was a grocery business annexed with a liquor store. As the company was located in a corner building on one of Glasgow's busiest intersections, it's likely to have had a significant customer base. Maybe this bottle found its way all the way from Amsterdam to the heart of the Scottish Highlands via the aforementioned corner shop in the middle of Glasgow city centre. I mean, it makes sense. Oh yeah, and that line on the bottle, I'm happy to say that that is not a crack, which I had feared. It wasn't until I looked more closely that I noticed the mould formation lines that lead to it from both sides, and in several different places too. They don't run through the main line. So, it has to be a defect in manufacturing, and not damage caused afterwards. Result! Finally, thanks to my friends Carolina and Nick from the Netherlands for their help with researching this feature. Chin chin, or should I say, gin gin. A huge thanks to local bottle digger Daniel Napier, who very kindly gifted Sarah and I these incredible finds that he made. Some absolute belters, including this beautiful pipe bowl that depicts St Nicholas or Santa Claus. The missing stem would have originally read, A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. How cool is that? I thought our viewers on Dirty Secrets of Scotland would be as interested as I am in these finds. Such a thoughtful thing to do, Daniel. Thank you so much. Underneath the soil, or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland